All right. Uh, let's see here. Today, we're going to talk through uh, one of my client, Christina's investment process. So we've, we've talked about this process for a couple of years together. And so we went through the reality of the situation and said, all right, does this make sense? Yes or no? And that's one of the funniest things to talk through. <laughs> does this make sense? Um, it makes sense on paper, right? This is a great paper problem. Uh, it looks really good on the plan. Uh, the risk of implementing it and the feeling, like the uh, the reality um, of that feeling, doesn't work. Right? So, so let's. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna talk you guys through the scenario so you can see uh, what this client, what Christina's faced with. So you can you can see her numbers. So let's go back to the reality of um, this purchase property that she's living in was purchased in 2013. So you can see right here, 2013 for $187,500. So 2013, 1875. Before that, the house sold in 2001 for 163, 2003, 178, 2005, 189. So right here, you see that value went from 163 to 189 back to 187.5. And that's where she purchased it. So that, that reality is helpful, right? Because as she was working to purchase her first ever home, um, those values didn't change dramatically. And and then, you know, they, they went up and then they came back down and then she purchased and she's in that house w with a current payment of $1,118 a month. House is currently worth, you see this number, 10 years, $450,000. So that's what our market did over that decade. The decade before, that's what our market did, right? So one decade, a little bit of change, right? We went from 163 to 187. Uh, 189 and then back down to 187 got our purchase in next decade 187 to 450 all right so that's a massive change in the market so let's see um let's take today and rent let's rent the house and move all right so that's this next column so uh christina doesn't want to um become an accidental landlord like go out and try to buy something else can't sell her current house so she needs a sure thing or she's not stepping into this world so rent the current house and move. Let's see what that looks like. So uh, we're gonna go purchase a house that's the same as her current house, 450. Or we're gonna rent the larger house for 500 or we're gonna rent the desired house out there for, for uh, $550,000. So let's look at our current payment. Current payment is that $1,118. What's the risk today if, if you just, holds pat stays still well there's very little risk even if the market goes down by 10 percent, right which none of us anticipate but could happen right it happened before over here um 2001 to 2000 um i guess not really down 10 percent, but it, but you, you see you know it's possible right uh even if the market does go down 10 percent, it's still worth 405 she's she still paid 187.5 for it and she's been retiring her mortgage all this time. So there's not a lot of risk. If, if there's market volatility, she bought herself security, right? Bought herself a payment that she can afford long-term forever uh, in a house that functions perfectly fine for her and her family. So there's not a ton of risk um, in staying put. There's <laughs> lots of ways to make the current payment stay in the house long-term. So even if uh, current employment changed, uh, even if... Um, like there's a lot of ways to, to make a payment that's affordable um, and, and keep that payment paid on time uh, without going late in, in this world. So if, if she remains through the end of a 30 year mortgage, it'll be 2043. Uh, at that point, she'll only have taxes and insurance to pay and more than $500,000 in equity just sitting in this house available if it's ever needed. If, if we wanted to sell and move, uh, if we want to take out a HELOC and go back to school or a HELOC and start a business or a HELOC and send a kid to school. Like there's a lot of options in there. What could be done in 2043? So um, that, that security uh, is such a wonderful thing to have in the world, right? Um, there's a lot of times where we get house insecure, where we're, we might be paying too much for a property uh, and we can't actually afford it and we need somebody else to help us out or we need everything to go right for it to stay a good deal. In this situation, it's pretty well as secure as you're going to find, right? Unless you own it outright. So then let's look at the risks to rent the current house and move, right? So we're going to have a new payment 
of a new house. That's this $550,000 new house over here of $3,600 a month. Then we're going to rent out our current house and we're going to get $2,000 a month or so in there. So our payment, our, our outgo uh, is still going to be $1,600 a month, which is more than the 1118 um, that, that's going out the door today. So even with a move into a, a nicer house and, um, and the rent differential, we're still going to have a, a monthly outlay of roughly um, a little bit more than what we're spending today. And so that, that's what she's looking at. Like, huh. So I'm going to keep my house as a rental. I'm going to buy another house. I'm going to have a bigger payment. And am I comfortable with that? Even if it's $500 a month, is that a comfortable space for me? Yes or no. And so then let's look at the other risk, right? Like what happens if the tenant in her rental property destroys the home and stops paying rent? Right. So, and we, and we have to evict. So risk, if the tenant destroys the home and the tenant doesn't pay and an eviction is needed, then we have a $3,600 a month payment plus a $3,600 a month payment, right? Or I'm sorry, 1118 a month payment. Let's make sure I have my number right. I do. So we have our current house payment, 1118, and it's not paying it. So the owner's paying it. And then we have a $3,600 a month new house payment. So our, our monthly outlay goes from 1118 today to 4718 um, in the worst case scenario. And that's that's just the monthly payment, right? So we have to make that monthly payment for nine months um, to get the eviction through, most likely. I'm just using a nine month um, uh, as a guess. I haven't evicted a lot of people. Some of you have. Uh, some I've heard of some evictions taking two years. I've heard of some evictions taking a few months. I don't know you know, the, the timeline to me that I kind of looked up average nine-ish months. So there we go. Then I thought cost to evict. Well, we're going to have some costs associated with the eviction, put it in at sixteen at $6,000. If a tenant needs to be evicted, there's going to be repairs needed to get it back online for the next person. Just guessing, right? I, I'm just taking a guess here. I don't know that the tenant who isn't paying is also going to not vacuum. They may. I have no idea. But I'm just putting a modest figure of $18,000 in there. For a total amount, that, a, that an owner would need to feel comfortable at $52,308. So I have to have 52 grand somewhere sitting available to me to pay the mortgage, the cost to evict and the cost to repair the house to get it back into a rental. And at that point, right, let's say I have the 52, I slide it across the table. What do I have again? I have a new tenant, right? Which is risk again in a property that I'm, uh, behind that I'm paying an extra $500 a month for than what I'm doing today. And so when you walk through all of those scenarios, um, <clears throat> buying a house for 187.5, having it worth 450, um, needing a new house or wanting a new house at 550, um, and, and you start assessing, does this work for me? Well, financially, if you take these numbers and you stretch them out over the next decade and you own two houses over the next decade, even if you have some of this cost, even if you had to spend the entire 52308 in cost, you're still going to end up financially in a better position at the end. What that assumes, right, is that you've been able to get to the end, that you've been able to manage both payments, that you've been able to um, incur the cost or the loss or the repairs that are needed. And so I, I think... Um, when we start talking property investing, it's all rosy stories and yeah, let's go. Um, and I agree, like it financially is a great way to get there, um, to, to get ahead, to get security in the future, to have two properties, one as a rental uh, that cash flows, maybe it could be it could be paid off. But all of that requires things to go a certain way. And when things fail to go that way, if our plan derails, if we don't have monthly income, um, or if our tenant fails to pay income and we don't have monthly income and we've used our reserves, suddenly we're in a pretty risky spot where we went from having a very secure home, a very secure uh, place to live with a very affordable payment to losing them both. And, and I think that's a real part of investing that keeps a lot of us on the sidelines. Um, do I want to risk my current place to live, the place that I go home and sleep, the place that I uh, make dinner, the place that my kids Come home from school to do I want to risk that place for financial gain in the future and for some of us absolutely we're diving on it like yep let's go for some of us 
Not a chance. Uh, you know, if life has been one of those spaces where you've rented 15 places um, over 15 years and you finally got into your first home, you may not ever want to risk that home for anything. You want to pay that sucker off and, and you want to live there forever and pass that on to your kids and then let your kids have the free house that they can work in the future for, right? The next 30 years for them, you know, they have a free house. Maybe they can go get the investment properties and their lives might be uh, both secure and have good investments. And so I think uh, it's, it's worth looking at, right? A lot of times um, on paper, these, these ideas look amazing. Uh, when Christina and I met and talked through these scenarios, um, like on paper, man, this looks like a no brainer, like let's go. Uh, and then you start talking through, well, what happens if the six months after I buy this house, I can't work um, or six months after I buy this house, my tenant doesn't pay rent. Um, and, and then suddenly we have a different picture. And so that really tests uh, us. It tests our reserves. It tests our, um, our risk tolerance. Uh, it, it tests us in a lot of different ways. So as you guys are out there talking to friends, talking to colleagues, um, scratching your head, like, why wouldn't this person just buy another house? Or why wouldn't this person invest in that? That makes a lot of sense. Um, or as you're looking at yourself saying, why won't I take this leap? It sure seems like a lot of my friends are buying rental properties. Uh, maybe I should get one. And, and you're wondering what your hesitation is. Maybe this is your hesitation right here. Maybe it's this exact scenario for you. Right. It's you're not trying to buy a million dollar house with your four hundred fifty thousand dollar house. You're, you're trying to buy a five fifty house with a four fifty house as a rental. Um, and as a rental, like cash flow is great. Um, you're actually doing fine in it. Um, you still may not be in a spot where you're like, hey, I'm going to bet my future income on it um, and I'm going to bet my future security on this all working out. Uh, so anyway, that's uh, that's a quick recap of this one. If you have questions about it, if you want to talk through these scenarios, if you want to test out your scenario, uh, if you want to walk through what would it look like for me, um, please reach out. Let's have those conversations. Uh, one of the other pieces to, to rental property ownership is does the property pay all of its bills, right? So um, we all know water heaters fail. We all know roofs get hailed on, especially here in Colorado. We know that paint wears out and needs to get replaced. We know flooring wears out and gets, needs to be replaced. So if you want to talk through those costs and how do you budget for them and does the rental income plus all of its actual costs plus its hard costs uh, really generate income for you, let's run it through a calculator and make some assumptions and have a conversation about it. Um, so anyway, that's the whole point of this series is just to look at different examples, look at different ideas, look at uh, what can happen, what might happen, what do I want to happen, do I want to push and make this work, do I want to sit back and be secure and, and be happy with what this is giving me. Um, anyway, so that, that's what I've got for today. Uh, I thought it was a, a good a good example to share, so I hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, hope the rest of your day goes great. Thanks for watching. Bye.